It's Feedback Gaming back for some more Yugoslavia again. What? What are you doing, Dave? There was a few things I missed in my Yugoslavia playthrough. What I just want to address that shouldn't take more than 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. There are some things that I could have done to play more optimally. So I think what I'll do is make this bonus episode and I'll show ways of playing the game more optimally. There's two things I made, two mistakes. That I could have made and adjusted to make the game run significantly better in my favor. We'll just presume I'm playing a normal game and I'll show you what I can do to make things smoother, faster, stronger, etc. etc. We're gonna get rid of all the divisions, do the one exercise trick, all that jazz. I was gonna load this up with console commands, but I think it's gonna be better if I demonstrate it as an actual game and not just me just fudging around you know right all right everything's good let's go i could also turn the ai off to make it faster as well that's a possibility yeah i will do that actually. turn the ai off okay so what were the mistakes i made <clears throat> So we have a focus here called local militias that gives an extra 2% recruitable. Remember, 2%, that's actually more than volunteer only, and that's very similar to limited conscription. So that's limited conscription on top of limited conscription. The result of that is you've got the extra 2% and then an extra 1% for all Yugoslav regiments too, that leading you with an extra 3% recruitable. Now, the reason why I didn't go for this is because I went for ban the Slovene Nationalist Party. And I thought this was a communist one. You had to form the Peasants' Council. Because this is a dotted line, it basically just means this or this. One or the other. Not both. And I thought it was both. Now, think about it. Both doesn't make sense because you only select one or the other, can't you? And it all makes sense now. all makes sense. So, we are going to... Uh, I the fascist demagogue because we are going to switch ideology. I guess in this case, I can am breaking the rules because the idea was to stay non aligned. But I guess this is a nice way of showing you a more optimal way of playing as Yugoslavia. The downside is <coughs> actually, no, there are tell a lie. There is a way that you can flip back to non aligned. There is a one way of doing it. You know what? I'll, I'll demonstrate in that video. So there's three things I'm going to show on this video. So that's the first thing, local militias, extra 2%. You can do that once you've gone for limited self-government or form the peasant councils. Uh, in this case, we're going non aligned, so we're going to go down this path. And we are going to uh, go for limited self-government. The only downside of limited self-government is you lose some efficiency growth. Uh, but there is a way that we're going to work around that as well. So first thing is you've noticed, I've gone for the demagogue which I am going to try and fire a civil war. The brilliant thing about Yugoslavia is your stability is trash, which works in your favor, because that means you can fire a civil war almost immediately once you've got the political power. But there are a few things that we are going to do first. <clears throat> the big downside to this is you unfortunately are going to lose the foreign capital national focus, which is a bit of a pants, because minus 5% consumer goods is actually really damn good. But some of the benefits you're going to get from this are going to outweigh that 5% by a large margin. So what we're going to do is fire a civil war. And if you're not familiar with but on Death and Dishonor, when you fire a, fire a civil war, the vast majority of these national focuses disappear. You lose, sorry, national spirits disappear. There is a downside though, because the Serbian general staff is actually pretty good. The extra 10% planning is also pretty good. So I guess you could play this as kind of like a yin yang kind of thing. It's kind of like it has some benefits and it has also some penalties. It depends how you look at it. I personally think that this has more benefits than detriments. Two reasons. One, because some of these pe penalties are really bad. And I guess as a two, you're going to get into your focus tree significantly quicker. So we're going to go for limited self-government. We are going to prepare for a civil war, and we are going to ignite the civil war when we get the ability to do so. You need to be less than 50%, which we are, we're just missing the political power. Okay, so the reason why we're doing this one now is because this is a penalty. It means that you will suffer a minus 5% to your, Slovene, to your production efficiency growth. Now, efficient efficiency cap I don't think is much of a big deal because I can take the cap. Because a lot of time it's very rare that you actually reach the top of the efficiency cap. 
But efficiency growth is actually a really big deal. So I'd like to get rid of this. And this is the method I'm going to show you right now is how to get rid of it. So you must complete limited self-government first. That is crucial. About to get that done now. Oh look, the civil war's fired, but the AI's turned off, so they're just gonna be staring at each other across the front lines. It's gonna be like the trenches of World War One all over again. Good, limited self-government is done. We're gonna stop exercising you. Because Yugoslavia is such a small nation, you don't have to do any fancy tricks when it comes down to uh Preventing like a big conflict with your civil war with a small nation. You can just mop up all the victory points is so convenient Well, that was an easy civil war wasn't it that was glorious Oop. Oh, oh is it still going? 98% okay, we have to mop up some barren land There we go the civil war It's ended Right, stop moving, exercise. Alright, so as you can notice now, there are no national spirits. They're all gone. All of them. Boom. <laughs> so now it means that any national spirits that you add on to your nation now are permanently going to be here without any negative detriments. So you've got the option here to go the 25% extra political power. That is definitely the stronger one. And then you also get the option of extra 10% stability. Honestly, I don't think that was that great. Uh, and the, the beauty of traditional values... Is it gets you lead on to Greater Yugoslavia and all Yugoslav regiments for the extra 3% recruitable. So even if you're not aligned in this circumstance, you're not going to be in a situation that's going to hurt you. And plus, you, also, you can go for war economy. I never thought of that. Yeah, you can still you can go for war economy too. But that's because you're fascist. But I guess what you could do it because I mean the rules of a previous game. Sorry, I'm going back and forth here. The rules of my previous game was I had to stay in the line for as long as possible. So this is technically a breach of the rules, but I like to show you guys the most optimal ways of playing by using little fancy tricks. By the way, just to give a heads up, I never thought of this. It was actually one of my comments in my previous video that suggested the civil war to erase your national spirits. But this isn't my idea. I thank my commenters, you guys in the chat, the viewers themselves for giving me this. Uh, if you guys know any exploits, feel free to DM me on Discord. My DMs are always open. As well as on Twitter, as well as on... I read all my, I read all my comments as well. I read them all! Okay. Um, so at this point, you... At this point, you could either... There's no point going for any of these ones. Because this is this is adding stability on top of the, what you would already be losing for Croatian opposition. So it's pointless. So at this point, you go for Great Yugoslavia, all regiments. And then local militias. At this point, you wouldn't continue. So the only reason you continue down this focus tree is to get more political, uh, some more manpower, the so militias, and then Yugoslav regiments. And this part of the focus tree is done. Proceeding down here only hurts you, because in this case you're gonna have to deal with the political power loss. In this case, you're gonna have to release Croatia. And if you do choose to not release Croatia, don't forget you can always just do it through this menu anyway, <clears throat> to use it as a buffer against uh, the Germans later on in the game. And there you go, free political power. Okay, what was the other thing? think was that everything it was the militias oh and the civil war the so one final extra note one extra nugget on top is if let's just say you did want to go back to non aligned there is like a really cheesy way you can do it so let's just presume hypothetically that i actually fabricated manually on uh i've turned the ai off have i there you go the ai is going to move now oh no mutinies <clears throat> so let's hypothetically say we fabricated on a non-aligned nation and then we let them declare on you which you can do as fascist nation depend regardless of what the world tension would normally be so they go the gobbling up all the delicious land and we're dealing with the mutinies too oh no oh no the end of yugoslavia and they've actually chosen to completely annex me so I guess that doesn't work. I, uh, I'm actually starting to realize that maybe you don't have the ability to uh, change government. Let me, let me do a little tester. Oh god, look at the AI here. Splitting all the divisions into one armies. Boom. Yeah. 
What you doing? I gotta wait a day. Okay, it won't work for some reason. Okay, we just drag a big box. And it won't let me for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, it's because I'm not taking them over. Oh my goodness, boys. I'm new to this game, remember? So we're gonna put everyone here. This is just a little tester for my own peace of mind. Go here, go here, declare. Back to general with a good attack. They'll do. I will declare war. Kill them all. Go, go, go. You could probably just grab Sophia now. You guys can just grab there. Grab there. Do, 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 do. So, what I'm trying to find out now is with a peace conference, whether it gives you the option to change government if you're non aligned. And I don't think it does. I have the presumption it did. But I think only democratic nations can do that. I've always tried to think of a, an exploit method. No, you can't. So the only way you can change it to non-align is if you pop it. And I have a funny feeling the AI doesn't choose to pop it. And that's the same government I've got. Oh, no, it's not. They've got more communism than I have. But it's not an identical reflection on my government. Anyway, I thought I'd throw this on here, guys. Little extension to the video to kind of show you extra strats. Um, the Civil War thing is not possible, the one I, game I played, because, um, as I said to you, I tried to keep stay as non-aligned for the, for the entire game. I've still got mutinies. Um, yeah, I tried to stay as non-aligned for the whole game. Uh, but local militias is something you definitely want to go with. For the minus 5% of production efficiency growth, which is a bit of a thorn in the side throughout the whole game, local militias is definitely worth it. Worth it, Because the biggest issue you have with Yugoslavia is filling out all your front lines. And if you guys enjoyed this, I don't usually do these kind of theory craft videos. If you guys liked it, please speak up in the comments and let me know if you want to make want me to do more of these kind of like end of video series summaries. Uh, particularly if I've forgotten something, which I always forget something. Remember, no series that I make on Hoi4 is perfect. I get lots of comments from you guys telling me things I could have done differently to play more optimal. And I definitely read every single comment. Even you. See you there? That guy? You? I read your comment. I do. Anyway, boys, I hope you have a good day. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.